All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your PlayStation 5 controller up to Steam on your Windows PC so that you can play games uh, with your controller. So all you got to do is go up to Steam in the upper left-hand corner of the client window and click on Settings. And then once the settings is open, you'll be starting out on Account here in the sidebar. Just scroll all the way down on this left-hand sidebar and click on the controller tab, and then you should see a window that looks a lot like mine. Now, once you've got your controller plugged in, it should appear here, and then you can tweak a few settings, but most of your game controls are going to be tweaked inside of whatever game you're playing, because what Steam is going to do, it's what a lot of these drivers do, is it's going to pretend, unless the game you're playing has native support for the controller that you're using like a few of them do like hell divers is a game that i play that has full playstation 5 controller support um it's gonna pretend like it's an xbox controller just so you know so let's go ahead and plug in my ps5 controller so we can see what it can do so it might take it a moment as you can see i just plugged it in and it's not quite detecting it immediately but once it's figured it out it took like 10 seconds it'll show up here. And so you got a few options here. The first one is, do you want the vibrations to play through the controller, the haptic feedback? You can say yes, no by toggling it on or off. Uh, there's also the option to swap around a couple button labels for the Nintendo button layout. If you want that, it's kind of self-explanatory. It swaps around A and B and X and Y. You can turn that on here. That's not always something that will work depending on the game. Some games will only display Xbox buttons and some games will only display the basic arrangement of buttons and there's nothing that this setting's gonna really do. But if you wanna try, you can turn that on. This allows you to test the device inputs to make sure that your controller is working. So if I clicked on this, you could just like click around and it'll show me all the buttons and if they're working and all that good stuff. This will also kind of show you if you've got like horrible stick drift, because right now I'm not moving. But if I, if I had stick drift, you'd be like, oh my gosh, even when you're not touching it, it's, it's freaking out. So that's that. You can close that once you've determined that everything is working cor correctly. Then you can also calibrate your controller by clicking on this, and you can walk through calibrating your joysticks, and your gyro acceleration and all of that good stuff. And you can even change the color of your LED to basically whatever you want. And if you look down on your controller, it'll change the light that lights up on the front. Um, this doesn't really let you change the key bindings. Again, most of the key bindings you're gonna be changing inside of whatever game you're playing. And down here, there's just some basic settings, external gamepad settings. Um, guide buttons focuses Steam, enable Steam input for Xbox controllers. You can toggle that yes or no. I leave that off when I use my Xbox controller, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you can change how PlayStation controller support works. Um, by default, it'll say not enabled. And if that's the case, you'll want to turn on enabled. Now, the problem with saying enabled here, and this is a kind of a catch-22, when you say enabled, it'll only work in games that have built-in support for PlayStation controllers. So what you want is to say enabled in games without support. And then what that will do is it'll work in all games, but the ones that don't have native PlayStation support, it'll pretend that it's an Xbox controller. Next up, it asks if you want to enable Steam input for Switch controllers. That's the Switch Pro controller. You can say yes or no. If you don't have one, you can just leave that off. Um, you can enable Steam input for generic controllers. There's a lot of controllers out there that look like a, a PlayStation controller. or They look like an Xbox controller, but they're made by like Logitech or somebody else. Those are generic ones. Um, if you have one of those, you would enable support for it right here by toggling this on. Down here, you can turn off controllers when exiting big picture mode. Um, big picture mode is when you click on this button up here and it's got like a big, almost console-like layout for Steam's game UI. 
That's kind of nice when you're playing on the couch with friends. Um, if you like having your controllers only work in big picture mode, you can turn this on. And the moment you exit big picture mode, it'll ignore all the inputs from your controllers. Uh, down here, it's idle gamepad shutdown timeout. So after 15 minutes, your game controller will go to sleep. You can change that to never, or you can change that to 120 minutes. Uh, because I've got mine plugged in, it doesn't really matter. So I'll switch that to never. And then down here, you can download some extended feature support for your Xbox controller. Uh, it doesn't really change anything on this menu per se, but if you like having that and you want to use that for your Xbox controller, you can click on this to install it. It'll require you to restart your computer though, so just be aware. And then down here for non-game controller layouts, like this is when you're using your controller for like on the desktop or on guide button cords, whatever that is. You can change those settings and those key bindings in here, but you have to enable Steam input. I don't really mess around with these, so if you want to use these, that's kind of at your own pace. I will probably do a tutorial on what that means later and how to do that with different controllers. But for right now, most of what you want is to just plug this controller in and you're, that's like 90% of the, the battle is if it shows up. And then there's a couple of toggles, depending on your controller type, that you want to use that enable proper full support when you're playing games. I also have, for those who are interested, a discount code for NordVPN in the video description below. If you click on that, it gives you a discount on the service and it also gives me a kickback to help support the channel. And if you're not familiar with NordVPN, the whole notion of a VPN is it allows you to log in to a server somewhere else in the world that allows you to function as if you're using the internet from that location. It's great for disguising your internet traffic so people can't snoop on what you are doing. It helps to stay safe and secure for doing things like mobile banking on the go. And it's also nice for things like watching videos that are region locked if you've got things like Hulu. It's also got a few other handy details that are great for things like your phone. Like if you log into NordVPN on your phone, it's got a built-in ad blocker so that you don't get nasty ads spammed throughout all of the different apps that you use. And in general, it's got some great security features that help keep you protected while you're online. So I totally recommend it. And uh, if you're interested, the link's in the video description below, and I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and bye, everybody, and have a good one.